Good to have with us now Fox Sports NFL rules analyst Dean Blandino joining the show. Also the former NFL VP of officiating for about five seasons and now the head of officiating for the newly formed UFL. Dean, thanks for giving us some time. Uh, It looks like we could be seeing a sea of change on the kickoff in the NFL, but you are wholly familiar with this, having witnessed it, um, you know, previously. And the thing I want to first kind of get your take on is this is kind of a collaborative thing that the XFL kind of did with the NFL. Can you maybe just lay that out for us first? Like, was this kind of like a test run in the XFL so the, the NFL could get a look at it? Was there some collaboration there? Well, I think it eventually evolved into that. I, I think prior to the the reboot of the XFL in 2020, we, we got together, had a lot of conversations about the kickoff, looking at the trends in the NFL and the kick return numbers going down. So, uh, you know, we try to say, okay, let's let's keep the return in the game, but let's try to reduce the speed and the spacing of the players. And I think that's where the XFL kickoff was born out of. And it was, you know, it's very different, a drastic change from what we're used to. And I think the NFL uh, took notice and there was a lot of good collaboration, a lot of conversations, um, the NFL trying to understand, okay, what is this kickoff about? Give us, give us the details. What's your experience been? And the experience was positive in the XFL with a high rate of returns, a low rate of injury. And then obviously with where the kickoff, return was last year for the NFL 2023 historic low in terms of returns 22 percent and uh and it became a a a, almost a non-play and so the league is looking at making some pretty significant changes and they're at the league meeting right now having these conversations and 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 thinking about these changes as we speak so if this thing comes through and and it passed with flying color I think it'll probably may they may push it back to May and those the you know the later on uh, with the ownership meetings that come in a couple of months. What will it look like? What has been the, I mean, when you see a kickoff now if, with this new line alignment, what's going to look like? What, what, what the, what's the personality going to be? Sure, sure. And I, and I do think this will get pushed to May. I really do. I don't, I don't think, you know, with everything that's happened and it's been, feels like it's been a short window to try to get all this input and create this play. So I do think they'll push it to the May meeting. And, uh, and and ultimately vote on it then. But this is different. This is the kicker at the 35 still, but then everybody else is on the other side of the 50. So so the remaining 10 kicking team players would be on the return team's 40, and then you would have a, a five-yard belt from the return team's 35 to the 30, and you would, have, you would have eight up to nine return team players in that belt with seven, at least seven on that restraining line, on that 35, you could have one or two returners deep, and then the ball has to make a target line, so the ball has to reach the 20. And then once the ball hits the ground or is touched by the returner beyond the 20, the play begins. So you have those players where normally a traditional kickoff, you've got the kick, the kicking team, you know, it's a long run, there's a lot of space, and then you get you have the opportunity and potential for more high-speed collisions. This keeps the players bunched together and, uh, and it becomes almost more like a scrimmage play, uh, possibly a little more like a punt in terms of more catch blocks versus that, that real attack block where you're coming together um, with, with high distance, with you know, long distance and, and high speed. So I think that's what the, the play um, will look like. And again, it'll be interesting to see how this thing goes in the next, you know, the next couple of weeks, months, and how they, how they figure out getting this thing into the NFL. Explain what happens if the ball goes into the end zone, if it gets touched back, if the guy catches it, you know, there's because there's a, a chance that it could be spotted on the 35. And then there's some sure. instances where it's only the 20. What are the differences and how's that work? Yeah, two different touchback spots. And I think, again, the, the theory is to incentivize the return. So if the kicker just, you know, kicks it out, out through the end zone, like we've seen a, a lot in the last, you know, last couple of years, that would come out to the 35, but if the, the ball hits in the field of play and then goes into the end zone, that, that would only be the 20. And so, so there's an incentive in terms of the kicker, hey, I don't want to just bang it through the end zone because I'm giving my, my opponent pretty really good field position, the, the 35. And then for the returner, if I'm just going to let it go into the end zone, I'm not going to get that benefit of the 35. I'm actually going to get worse field position. So again, it's built... It's designed to incentivize the returns with the with the theory of with the closer proximity of the players, 
um, it, it, it will be a safer play. Do you see the ball getting line drived into the 20 and then making it a hot ball to try and field? Because then you don't risk the 35. You just risk maybe landing it short of the 20, the other 20, that kind of thing. Is that? Well, you do that and then they get it at the 40. Is yeah, yeah go ahead. so so that was that was and that's a great question because we went through that we went through that with the XFL is you know what this really does is it gets rid of the squib kicks it get gets rid of that line drive because there's a lot of you could do it but there's a lot of risk you better be sure because if you don't make the twenty now that's like a kickoff out of bounds and you're gonna you're gonna give your opponent the ball at the forty so so there's a lot of risk there to try to just you know obviously if you could get it to the 18 the 17 yard line on the fly that's that would be a a, a good thing for the kicking team but there's a lot of risk there if you don't make the 20. So what what was the general approach of kicking teams with this rule in the XFL that you observed? What was the general approach, you know, that they felt was most advantageous to keep, you know, the opponent's drive start as far down the field as possible. The general approach ended up being kick it, kick it, you know, between the numbers and try to get it somewhere in that, you know, if you can get it from the 10 down to the goal line, if you can hit it in the field of play somewhere in that range, but they didn't mess around with the, with the boundary. Cause if you kicked it out of bounds, that yeah. was a significant penalty. Like we just talked about, if you try to, if you try to pooch it or, or, or line drive it and just catch the 20, there's, 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 significant risk there so it was really between the numbers and what we saw was returners on average you know catching the ball right around the five yard line and then and then you know trying to make a return typically uh, in 2023 the drive start was just shy of the 30 which was a couple of yards more than where the nfl was and we felt that was a good number and uh, and that's kind of what we saw our teams do for the most part in in, in the 2023 season. and what about some of the other numbers about like percentage of kicks returned for touchdowns percentage of um, you know, all the, all the numbers that they run. Sure. So the returns were, were significantly up You had You had 90, 90% of the returns of the kicks were returned. So that, that was a positive number for the XFL. We didn't have a ton of kick returns, uh, for touchdowns. There was, there was really only one. And so that explosive return, and that's what we saw, you know, it became a, 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 for lack of a, a better term, it was a vanilla play where every, it looked the same. Yeah, there was a decent return, but we didn't have those explosives. So, you know, before the merger with the, with the USFL, we had talked about making some changes more so on the return team, similar to what the NFL is doing. They're giving, because the XFL, all the return team players were, were, it was the, it was the 35 and the 30, and they were all on the line. And so what the NFL has done is created a belt and they've given the return team some more opportunities to do some different things and be creative in the return game. And, uh, and that's where we were headed with the XFL. And then obviously with the merger with the USFL, we had to kind of combine the two kickoffs and figure that out. One important thing to mention here is the fair catch was only a one year rule proposal last year. That is no longer an option here on these on this new kickoff. Correct. Yeah, the fair catch would go away. It would actually, you would not be able to fair catch um, on on a kickoff in in this new setup. And again, it's going to be interesting because, like you said, that was a one year change, so that would have to be voted back in. If we don't get something done right now, you know, we could end up with the 2022 kickoff rule, or we could end up with something completely different where we just don't have a kickoff and we put the ball in the 25 and we go, which would be a significant and a drastic change. I certainly wouldn't be in favor of that, but so hopefully they can figure this out and get something done um, at the May meeting. And, and certainly when you start talking about just turning the ball over to the offense, giving the ball in 20, you got to do something about a, an onside kick situation. Um, that always that, you know, that desperation moment when a team actually, you know, uh, tries to get the ball back. What's the ruling on that with this new kickoff setup? Yeah. So with this new kickoff setup, you, you eliminate, you know, the surprise onside kick, right? You just, you can't do it. And, uh, and so you would have to declare. So as part of this rule change, a team in the fourth quarter, if, if, if they were behind, they could declare an onside kick and it would go back to um, the, the 2023 rule for the kickoff with the alignment. And, and you would, you know, still no run up, but you would have that, that normal alignment that we had in 2023 and you could attempt an onside and all the normal rules would apply. Obviously, if you if you got rid of the kickoff altogether, you'd have to have an alternative, right? And that's why Philadelphia proposed a fourth and twenty. 
uh, you know, got to have it play. The XFL used a version of that, fourth and 15. USFL had a fourth and 12 play. Um, it's an exciting play. It's different uh, from the onside kick. And I think the concern with the onside kick right now for the NFL is that its its, it's success rate is, is significantly lower than where it had been. Last year was a 5% success rate yeah. on non-surprise onside kicks. That's a low number. And when you talk about that play, like you said, that's such an integral part of the game because a team that's behind multiple scores with four minutes to go without a viable onside option, um, the game's over. And 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 that's not what we want for our fans and for our game. We want those exciting finishes and those those opportunities for comebacks. All right. So last one I've got for you, Dean. I know you said your anticipation is that it'll get tabled till May meetings and, and there won't be a ruling on it necessarily here in the March meetings. But do you sense that I mean, it's obvious that they feel change is necessary, but do you feel that there is enough support for this proposed change to get three quarters of the vote? I think right now, probably not because there's there's been so much work done and great work, the special teams coaches. And I just don't know. You have a league meeting that started yesterday and now you're asking the ownership, the membership to vote today. They just don't have all the details. They don't have all the understanding. And so you got to vet it out more. And I think giving some time, I think that's the right thing to do. If you don't have the time on the front end, let's figure this out. Let's have some more conversations. I don't think they have the votes right now. Maybe after having more conversations and everybody getting a better understanding of it, they'll have the votes in May. But I would be shocked with everything that, that the health and safety folks have talked about from the NFL and the the higher rate of injury and everything else that we're talking about. I'd be shocked if there isn't some change. And I, and I do think that in May with some, some more time to talk through and vet through this, that, that I think that's when they have a better chance of getting something done. And there's also, like you say, we, we talk about rule changes every year in the NFL. The game evolves constantly. Um, do you sense any more pushback about the hip drop tackle that they're going to get? I mean, I saw a release by the players union and they're kind of sticking up for the defensive guys saying, hey, listen, you know, we we got to be able to play. Uh, what's the conversation around the hip drop tackle? It's because it's a little bit like the old horse collar tackle, except they just grab the guy lower, right? Yeah, it's it's similar to the horse collar. I think the biggest difference with the horse collar, though, is that you, you had a, a an objective element where they grab the collar, but the horse collar, you don't have to land on the back of the legs, right? If you just pull the runner toward the ground and the knees buckle, it's a foul. This really part of that rule would be landing on the back of the legs. And so my concern with, with the hip drop, and I think it's the concern of, 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 you know, the NFLPA and a lot of people that are pushing back on this is how do you officiate it? Right. If I'm, if I'm, in, if I'm in a chase mode and I'm trying to drag a runner down from behind and I catch the back of his legs, is that going to be a 15 yard penalty? And I think that's a concern. So you got to clearly define it, use good video examples of what is and what isn't. I think the league's approach, they want to get it in the rule book, but I think, and they've been pretty transparent about this. They do not want the officials. If this rule goes in, they don't, they're not going to tell their officials to throw a bunch of flags. They're going to do this during the week with video review and fines and warning letters, um, which is kind of it's tough when you put in a safety rule and you say, well, we're not going to call it on the field. We're going to do it during during the week. I think that's a tough message, too. Uh, I just I just think this needs more vetting out as well. But this that they did pass this rule. It is going to go into effect. And, and despite it. despite all the conversation we hear about all the other rule changes, this one, they're just putting it in. They're going to put, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if the vote has happened on it, but I'd be surprised if it doesn't go in. Again, yeah. what the health and safety group has said is this, you know, they they looked at 20,000 tackles in the last couple of years. They see one horse collar tackle, uh, one one hip drop tackle per game. They've seen one injury per week. So so they want to try to get this out of the game. And uh, and so I would imagine this is going to go in, and, and then it's going to take a lot of work on everybody's part to figure out. And look, the coaches and players – they they figure it out. They adjust. They 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 kind of. But it's there's going to be some growing pains on this one. Right. Fox Sports NFL rules analyst Dean Blandino helping spell out some of the proposed changes that could be coming down the pike in the NFL. Dean, thanks very much. You got it, guys.